Now, if you consider this plane going to the east here, just going to the east, you see that the plane always seems to be level with respect to the earth. And then, you know, if it keeps itself at a level altitude, then it would just simply land at a country on the other side of the globe. Okay. That's easy to see when you're going east and west. But what about when you're going from north to south? And this is, this is the proof and you can't deny it. So you start your journey at the Arctic as far to the north as you can. And you begin to go south. Now notice as I'm going south, I have to continue dipping the nose of my airplane in order to stay level with the ground. Now I'm going to continue all the way to Antarctica. Now notice I'm continuing to dip my nose down to stay level with the earth. Now I'm going down into South America, continuing to dip down, and finally I get down here to Antarctica. And look at that. My airplane is upside down. This is Glenn Hall trying to prove that if you take a toy aircraft and have it follow a ball, it will end up upside down in relation to the room he is sitting in. Hello, this is Geek Out, and in this video, we are not going to point out the obvious flaws in Glenn's irrefutable proof video. No, in this video, we are going to answer the age-old question, why don't pilots point the nose of their aircraft down while flying across the globe? Well, the short answer is, they do not. I'll start with this bold statement. Planes don't fly in altitude. They fly in air pressure. More precisely, a density altitude. As everyone knows, the further you get from the Earth's surface, the thinner the air gets. Talk to the folks who climb Mount Everest if you don't believe me. Heck, even flat earthers cite this when they try to prove gravity does not exist. Never mind that density is based on gravity. Glenn would have you believe that when you fly an aircraft, the pilot needs to point the nose down or you would continue like a rocket into orbit. Rockets use sheer power to get itself out of the Earth's atmosphere and into orbit. Aircraft use the atmosphere to generate lift to fly. Aircraft have what we call a service ceiling. That is the highest altitude upon which an aircraft can no longer climb faster than 100 feet per minute. It is the highest altitude an aircraft can go where its wings can support its weight. For our example, we will be using the popular Cessna 172, which has a service ceiling of 14,000 feet. Lift is determined by the amount of air molecules passing over a wing. The higher you go, the faster you have to move through the air in order to compensate for the reduced lift due to the thinner air. Continue climbing and eventually you will reach a point where your engines are at full throttle, 100% power, and your pinch angle is at the critical angle of attack. For our Cessna at 14,500 feet at full power and just under its critical angle of attack, we have no more power and the only way we can climb is to pull up. But by doing that, we exceed the critical angle of attack and, well, we stall. To further illustrate this point, here is the short field takeoff distance table from the Cessna 172 performance section in the POH, or Pilot Operating Handbook. As you can see at sea level and zero degrees centigrade, it only takes 860 feet to reach the takeoff speed of 51 KIAS, knots indicated airspeed. But at airports 8,000 feet and 40 degrees C, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, it takes 4,615 feet to reach the same takeoff speed of 50 knots. That's more than five times the runway length. Another thing, airspeed indicators don't really measure speed. More importantly, they don't measure ground speed. What they do measure is a differential pressure between the static air and ram air. That's the pressure measured using the pitot tube. It's how fast or how much air is moving over the aircraft wing. So a trimmed airplane 
that's a plane adjusted so that it will fly straight level. Hands-free will fly at pressure altitude without touching anything. If the plane enters into thinner air, even slightly thinner, it will slowly sink wings level until it finds the pressure altitude it was trimmed for. Conversely, if an aircraft enters thicker air, it will slowly climb all by itself until finding the altitude it was trimmed for. So, pilot does not need to compensate for the curvature of the Earth. Aerodynamics does it all by itself. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more, then subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Until next time.